guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today we are here in my kitchen space and I recently decorated it for spring and it makes my heart so happy. We are already halfway through March, which means spring here in Ohio is just around the corner. I cannot wait. The sun is shining in this window this afternoon and it just makes my heart happy. But um, you guys know more recently, I'm really clinging to more refreshing, minimal decor. I am really priding myself in the less is more approach to decor and I'm craving simplicity. So today I wanted to share how I decorated my kitchen with all of that in mind and then also what are my kitchen essentials that I leave out on my countertops year round because as I get older, as I grow in my love for homemaking and cooking and meal planning and all of that good stuff. I am pretty ruthless about my counter space. It is prime real estate. And so what I have out are things I wanna use every single day. So I'll share what those are as well. Um, so if you're excited to talk spring today, to enjoy the sunshine with me, be sure to give this a big thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take you around a few different areas in my kitchen today, starting with my peninsula. Now, in previous videos, I've always kept it really simple on my peninsula, maybe just a candle or a bowl of fruit. Well, I wanted to change things up for the spring. I was just craving change, and I found this huge, I mean, it's massive, wooden tray at a local antique shop probably about six months ago and I've used it in a couple different places. I had it on my front porch for a long time, um, but I brought it in the kitchen space. I love the contrast of the dark wood against our white quartz countertops. And I don't know, I just really liked it. I liked that it was nice and big. It felt proportionate to our large peninsula. So I created a little vignette in this space that I'm loving. I have a white ironstone pitcher here and it's kind of a funny story. My daughter and I went foraging the other day and I wanted to go around and just see if I could find any trees that had twigs with buds, big swelled buds. And sure enough, I did. We have tons of invasive honeysuckle in this area. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. But when I cut this, it was not in bloom at all. It was just the twigs with the swelled buds. And Emma and I cut a bunch. We had so much fun. We made a little day date of it. I brought it home. I put it in water and because it's inside um, in our warmer temperatures with the sunshine, it's sort of a greenhouse effect and it causes forced blooming. So we're at about a week now of these branches and how stunning. I love the pops of green. It's true to what the trees look like outside right now in March, just starting to bud out. And I think it's a perfect addition for spring. Now, I don't know how long these will last, of course, but so far we're weak in and they're going strong. Um, we'll see, but once these kind of fizzle out, then I'll move on to something else, maybe some fresh flowers or something. And then I have a glass bowl here. It's just a thrifted mixing bowl. And I love to fill this with different assorted fresh fruits for my kids to have on hand. And right now, um, I think pears were on sale this week. So I got a bunch of pears and they will enjoy those too. But before we go any further in the video, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Seed. So over the last couple of months, I have been taking a probiotic and prebiotic um, from Seed that I have truly been enjoying and seeing so many incredible just benefits from. So every morning I have been in the habit of taking this guy right here. It is the Seed DS1 Daily Symbiotic. 
Um, so it's a prebiotic and a probiotic. I've been taking it every single day and it promotes healthy gut function um, and so many other incredible health benefits that we will get into. But I wanted to show you guys, this is the main bottle that it comes in. You can see the seed on the packaging there. It's a nice glass jar. It looks really nice sitting out. Um, but it also comes with a little travel size um, glass container, which I think that is um, just very thoughtful. So the glass jar is a 30 day supply and when you're ready to refill, Seed um, also has these recyclable refill packets so you can just open it up and pour it right into your jar, which is very environmentally friendly. So I love supporting companies who are all about that. DSO-1 was formulated for whole body benefits beyond the gut, including skin health, heart health, and micronutrient synthesis. I can tell you that my skin feels like it's glowing lately. DSO-1 also promotes healthy regularity, which is um, important. <laughs> and it's free from things like dairy, gluten, soy, animal products, peanuts, binders, preservatives, and even 14 classes of allergens defined by the European Food and Safety Authority. The SO1 is made with two-in-one via cap delivery technology. Capsule in capsule that protects against stomach acid, digestion enzymes, and bile salts for viability through digestion. The live probiotics will actually make it to the end of the small intestine for delivery into the colon, which is good news for us. The outer prebiotic capsule is made from Indian pomegranate and the outer capsule serves as an elegant barrier to oxygen, moisture, heat, and that way you don't have to refrigerate it, which I really appreciate. That makes life a lot easier. Seed is awesome. They're giving us a little discount. You can use code Amy15 for 15% off of your first month's supply of the DS01 Daily Symbiotic or the PDS08 Pediatric daily symbiotic. So make sure you go check that out in the description below. And thanks again, Seed, for sponsoring today's video. I have the camera turned around now and I'm just gonna take you around. This is gonna be really just kind of peaceful, relaxing, hanging out with a friend, casual style tour. So I already talked about this, but let's take a close up look at the vignette here. You can see the beautiful wood detailing. I love just the fresh fruit in a nice glass bowl. I will say, when it comes to kitchen styling, I love the combination of woods, whites, and glass. I think that's really classic and just a good mindset to have if you're styling shelves or a vignette. Sticking with that kind of theme makes it feel cohesive and adds a lot of fun texture, but I've got the pears and then in this little ironstone picture, you can see the forced blooms here, if it'll focus. <laughs> it doesn't want to focus on them for some reason, but you can see how sweet they are. I just love them. They're definitely the inspiration behind my kitchen spring decor this season. But we'll move on over here. I ended up hanging three vintage cutting boards on this beam, and I really love the look of that. And then over on this door, this door leads to our mudroom and laundry room. And um, I recently painted this door. Um, it's kind of like a mushroom grayish taupe. It's really pretty against all the white. Um, but the color is called Mothwing by Sherwin Williams. I had some left over from painting my hutch, so I just painted this door. Um, but I have more of those branches in this basket. And again, just really sweet, really whimsical and airy. And then let's see, I don't have a rug in here right now. I'm trying to just keep it simple. I feel like I keep putting a rug in here and then it gets dirty and then I throw it away. I feel like it's a waste of money, honestly. It's just something I'm trying not to buy this year is new kitchen rugs. <laughs> so we'll see how long that stays, um, my plan, but. I've got Maggie's food and water dish. It's from Home Goods. And then we'll move over here first is more of the functional. 
items of the kitchen because this is where I do all my cooking. So um, I'm not gonna go through like all my cabinets today. I already have a video like that that I will link above for you guys. Um, it's sort of my kitchen organization tour and I share all of my cabinets like this spice drawer here, or not drawer, <laughs> spice cabinet here. Um, I have really taken my time organizing everything. So I will link that video down below as well as my Amazon kitchen favorites for you guys. But today we're talking countertops. <laughs> I got off topic. Um, over in this little nook, I don't like to keep a lot because it's pretty small, but I have this um, vessel. It's actually a planter from Lowe's. Um, I think it's really pretty. It looks kind of vintagey to me, but um, it's really inexpensive. Picked it up, and I've been keeping my wooden utensils inside of it. And I think it's just unique and different. I like it a lot. Um, I use my wooden utensils practically every day, so definitely essential to leave on the countertop. I've got a little plant there for a pop of color. And then on my stove, the two things that I keep all of the time um, is my cast iron skillet. I love this. I got it at a thrift store, oh gosh, shortly after I got married. So I've had it nearly 10 years and um, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you figure it out, it makes cooking just easier it makes food taste better <laughs> I just really I love my cast iron skillet definitely recommend if you are um, ever thinking about switching and then I also keep my copper tea kettle out not only is it beautiful I love the little blue detailing there I don't know if you can see that um, but it's functional I make tea maybe not every day but multiple times a week I like to make tea in the evening time, so having that sitting out, being able to make a cup of tea is really nice. And then up above here, I hung a bunch of copper. Those are just copper things that I have collected. They're just decorative. I don't pull them down or use them for anything um, really ever. And then up above it, I hung this little iron stone platter on my hood vent. And then over here in this little corner, my kitchen has a lot of corners, <laughs> which makes decorating a little bit daunting. Sometimes I feel like I have a lot of space to work with, which is so nice, but sometimes it can start to feel cluttered fast. So I try to be mindful of that. Over here, these are just practical things. I um, cook a lot with kosher salt. I like to keep it in this little ball jar. Got my avocado oil, because I use it for cooking every day. And then I keep my cake stand here. I have this glass cake stand. I think this came from Walmart years ago, but I love having this here and filling it every week with just different baked goods. I made the kids these healthy banana chocolate chip muffins. Oh, they are so good, you guys and they have really good ingredients in them. I like to use the Stevia chocolate chips, or not Stevia, what is it? Lily's, <laughs> Lily's chocolate chips. I think they're made with Stevia. Um, yeah, they're really, they're really healthy, which is great. My kids have no idea that they're healthy. <laughs> and then um, I like to hide cords with cutting board, or not cords, outlets with cutting boards. And then, if you don't know, this is our butter crock. We always have soft, salted butter at room temperature. If you don't have one of these things, you need one. <laughs> I love it. I don't know why. It's not any different than um, using a butter dish, but I just think they look so cute and they're fun to use. Um, I will link an option down below for you guys. Um, I probably have one in my Amazon storefront too, but these are so neat i love having one because it's just really nice to always have soft butter on hand for cooking for toast or whatever and then that's kind of all of this side now we'll move to the fun stuff so my kitchen sink area right now is 
like my herb garden. I have really been enjoying fresh herbs this winter. I feel like it's really giving this space a lot of life and it's nice to be able to have basil or mint um, in the dead of winter. It's been really, really nice. So I think that's something I'm gonna continue to do every winter. But you can see um, I have a basil plant. This is spearmint. It's really starting to take off. Look at all the little baby new growth. <laughs> oh, I also have this um, little cake stand that I keep my brushes on just so I'm not always putting them right onto the countertops. They can dry out. Um, those are just from Amazon and this has dish soap inside it so I don't need to keep my dish soap on the countertop which is kind of nice. I'll, um, I'll link that for you guys. Um, this is actually not an herb, although it looks like an herb. It's a, some kind of house plant that is a creeping Jenny. It's a, I don't know what it's called, but I know it's a creeping Jenny, like house plant version. <laughs> it's some kind of variety of creeping Jenny. There, I'll say that. <clears throat> and, um, I just think these are so fun to have on the windowsill, have something growing. Um, it's really nice. And then my sink which I get questions about this sink a lot. It is from Vintage Tub and Tile. I did buy it new. Um, it's cast iron. It's over 200 pounds, so it's no joke, but it's beautiful. And next to the sink, I have this soup terrine that I got at Goodwill, and I filled it with some white daffodils. They're not quite blooming yet, but when they do bloom, it'll be so pretty. I love having daffodils in the house in springtime. It's really nice. And then this is my absolute favorite spring candle. <laughs> it is the lilac candle from Antique Candle Company. I need to order more because oh, it makes your entire house smell like you just went out to the yard and cut a bunch of lilacs. Such a good smell. It smells like spring. <laughs> I've got a kitchen towel here. When it comes to spring decorating um, linens, swapping them out for things with stripes or blues or lighter colors is a great way to go. And then I always keep my glass canisters out with my flowers and oats and homemade granola. I use them all the time and um, they're just really classic. I keep my KitchenAid out for baking. And then this is sort of the blah part of the kitchen, but over in this corner, you can't see it when you're looking into the kitchen, um, but over in this corner, I've got this really cute wicker two-tiered basket that I use for potatoes and onions um, and sometimes other produce, but we kind of like to keep this part hidden. <laughs> but I told you, I'd tell you what all my countertop essentials were. So um, moving over here, I cannot recommend a cozy coffee nook enough. Um, this is mine and for spring the only thing I really changed I added that faux rosemary plant I think that came from Target last year just for a pop of color and I've got like white dishes and um, some crocs <laughs> full of rolling pins and this little tiny baby croc how cute is that is actually where I keep <laughs> my garlic. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun. Get creative with hiding different things. Crocs are a great thing to have in the kitchen for hiding produce or bread or whatever you need to hide. <laughs> I've got another tea towel there. And then on this little vignette, I've got my cozy kitchen lamp, a cutting board to hide all the cords. And then I actually got this faux daffodil plant. It was kind of in this ugly container. <laughs> I got it at Goodwill for three, I think it was $3, which is probably a little spendy compared to um, normal, but because it's almost spring, I feel like they've marked up some of the spring decor. But I did find it at Goodwill and I stuck it in this little white sugar dish. And I think it's really cute. Um, I think it's really sweet for springtime. And then I've got my Nespresso. I love my Nespresso. I love having this little coffee nook. Um, I have my frother put away right now, but I have been obsessed with frothing coconut milk and almond milk together and pouring it in my coffee. 
it's low sugar and it tastes like a tropical vacation <laughs> it is so good um so that's that and over there on the left is just my mock mill which um is not an everyday use for me i use it every couple weeks maybe once a week i don't know often enough um it's pretty heavy that i like to leave it on the counter and it's so nice to be able to stone grind our own wheat berries and produce our own flour. Um, all of our flowers over there, we ground ourselves, which is really nice. Um, we're trying to just kind of um, really start to think about where we're sourcing some of our food and, and the ingredients that we use. But anyway, I think that is everything in our kitchen space right now. So that was just a quick tour of my kitchen and everything I have in here for springtime. It feels so fresh and cozy in this space and I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here today. It would mean a lot if you would join my YouTube family. I am so glad that you're here and I will see you guys really soon in my next video. Bye!